LabVIEW, and by extension LabVIEW FPGA, provide direct support for flip-flops. Let me review flip-flops briefly. Uh, flip-flop is a single-bit memory. It's the foundation of all sequential logic circuits. The symbol for the flip-flop is a rectangle, and I'll be concentrating my attention here on the D-type flip-flop. Again, it's a memory, so it's stored values available on the output that's designated Q. We need to have some mechanism by which a new value can be injected into the flip-flop, and that's handled with the D input. And the D input uh, will sample whatever is being applied and then store that value on the rising edges of the clock waveform. So this input is also referred to as the trigger input. The clock waveform, or system clock, is a periodic square wave signal. And for the rising edge trigger device that I'm picturing here, each rising edge of that clock causes the input to be sampled and then transferred into storage. So every rising edge, it samples the value that's being presented on the D input. Then in between, the flip-flop stores that value. So we really have two operations here. One is a sample, the next is a storage operation. And again, this happens as long as we apply a system clock. Well, let's see how this notion of a flip-flop gets in implemented in LabVIEW. First, this is constructed using a while loop structure. The while loop repeatedly executes whatever elements it sees on the interior diagram, whatever that happens to be. Notice the uh, characteristic arrow, uh, kind of like the circulating arrow appearing here for the while loop structure. This gives us this notion of uh, iterating on, on the uh, subdiagram. So we can think of that iteration as being the same thing as that periodic clock waveform. Now as long as this uh, little stop sign icon remains false, the while loop will continue to execute. Now the while loop can be outfitted with the structure here that's referred to as a shift register. I'm putting this in quotes because this is not necessarily the same thing as uh, what digital designers think of when they hear the word shift register. Although it, it can be. We'll see if we can get to that later on. The idea is that this corresponds to the value that needs to be preserved and then as we go on to the next iteration of the while loop that preserved or stored value is available here. So we can think of the output on the left side is corresponding to Q. The input on the right side is corresponding to D. Now before the while loop begins, this is the initial value for that shift register. Now flip-flops normally will have an asynchronous reset or clear signal indicated by the vertical line. Now at first glance it might seem that Tying that to zero is the equivalent idea. But really more what's happening here is, think of this as being a power on reset pulse that's been applied. So at the beginning of operation, that shift register is initialized to a false. And then once we get into the loop, then whatever happens uh, will happen. Now, we see that the flip-flop, turns out, can be implemented with uh, what LabVIEW refers to as the shift register construct on the while loop. And there is also an equivalent device referred to as the LabVIEW feedback node. And both of these are equivalent to a flip-flop. Now, to help keep straight the various signals that I'm looking at here, it will actually be helpful to consider this very simple circuit which is a flip-flop combined with an inverter. 
So let's look at the version that's based on the shift register first. Here we see the uh, current state. We see it passing through the inverter and then arriving at the D input. And that's what happens on the right side of the while loop. The periodic clocking waveform, this is this idea again of, of the while loop iterating on the contents uh, of its interior diagram. When this is constructed using a feedback node, and that's this device right here, the way I'm drawing it right now is intended to look exactly like the shift register version. That is, we see the output of the feedback node presenting the Q signal here. Again, that's the Q on the flip-flop over there. Here's the input to the shift register, and that would correspond to the D input again the D input on the flip-flop itself. Now on the while loop we think of this as preserving the value to the next iteration. So that's why I'm drawing it this way. It preserves the value found on D to the next iteration for Q. Now let me start to redraw this just a bit. LabVIEW provides a mechanism by which you can change the direction of the feedback node. That's what I've done here. Again, all of the wiring is still the same. All I've done is simply twist the feedback node in the opposite direction. But if you trace the wiring, you'll see that it's the exact same circuit. Now let me go ahead and clean up the wiring just a bit. Again, you should be able to trace this and see that it's exactly the same circuit again. So we have the Q going into the inverter, which then goes into the D input. Now the really neat thing here, I think, is that the feedback node version looks exactly like the original schematic circuit. Again, remember we have that uh, notion of a power on reset signal and that's the false value being applied to the initializer terminal as it's called.